Welcome to 1870 Off-Road. This is going to be the four-part YouTube series. You don't have to watch all four parts. That's why we have this intro. Covering the ESS system, its failure, its repair, the aux battery delete, the Odyssey battery upgrade, some troubleshooting, and a description and operation of how this stuff works. Let me get out of the way of the Jeep so you can see it. Jeep's front and center, not me. So that's what this is about. Big four-parter here. So again, they're all divided into four parts so that you don't have to watch all four parts of the video. Find the video that helps you watch that one. You'll have this little intro at the beginning of each one. Part one is going to be my call for help. That video is actually already made. I may not have this intro in it because I put that video out three weeks ago. That is when I had the ESS failure and my low voltage warning even after I replaced the battery. I had problems with my Jeep. That's all covered in part one. No solution is just a problem. Part two is the Odyssey battery upgrade. And the relearn process you have to do on newer vehicles when you replace the battery. They have to learn a new system. Part three, this is the big one, is an exhaustive, yeah, an exhaustive aux battery deleting list. I'm going to test four different methods for deleting the aux battery, three of which work, one did not. Uh, you can do any of the three you choose, but I'm doing method four. That's the one I was felt the most safe with. You can watch that video. That'll be part three. And part four is the leftovers. All the little odd things that didn't fit into a video. I'm going to explain the fuse array. I'm actually going to take my fuse array out. I'm going to test it. Mine's good. I didn't have to replace it. So I put the same one back in. But you're going to see how I did that in case you ever break your fuse array. You're going to see me checking battery voltage and mapping a schematic out in my head. Trying to figure out how the system operated. It's my baseline for troubleshooting. Then after all that, you're going to get a description and operation of the smart alternator system, the charging side, and the power side of this, all these components that make this smart alternator system operate correctly. Um, it's very complex. This is not like your old school vehicles. And again, a reminder, that's part four. All four of these videos can be watched independently. They're designed so that you can just watch part three, just watch part four, part two, whatever part is works for you. You don't have to watch all four parts to make it make sense. There's a little bit of overlap between all four of the videos. All four parts divided up, easier for you. Hope you enjoy. Well, here we are again, just like Groundhog Day. We have yet another failed aux battery. All right, your problem with these little batteries is that when this battery fails, it kills this battery. When this battery fails, it kills that battery. They both die at the same time. So with the Odyssey going in, I do not intend on putting that little battery back in there. And that's where I'm at right now. And right now I'm running a Jeep on one battery, but I have a fault light saying auto start stop system is not available. But so far it's running. And I have my jump starter in the back. I know I showed this in a previous video. You better not be getting back in my Jeep. I'll lay eggs somewhere else. Right there is my jump starter. I want so yeah, that's, uh, that's my recommendation. Have a jump starter. That way if this thing dies on you, you can jump start it. So benefits of living an hour away from a summit racing i did not have to go far to get my battery we'll put my buggy up all right here we go we are leaving summit racing got my battery time to roll out First things first, got to open it up and read the charging directions. Okay, so I expected this to be more complicated than this, but there's no directions. There's no, uh, actually it says right here on the battery. Let me show you. No initial current limit. Uh, right there, there you go. That's what we're going with. Odyssey battery. Begin in a minute, so. <laughs> well, I was gonna be short on time. But I gotta leave again here in a little bit. I gotta get this battery going. Want to come home, get this thing charging. So hopefully, I'll be ready to go tomorrow. If I'm home in time, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna make some brats, but I don't know if I'm gonna be home in time yet. Yeah, they distracted me in the middle of recording. I'm gonna be using YouTube video. I'm be wandering around doing this. <laughs> All right. All right, then. Let's see. What was I doing? So, we're gonna charge the battery. I'm gonna charge her on. Charger is charging. Okay, there we go. I'm going to uh, let this thing charge for a day or two. And then we will come back 
and probably tomorrow install it. The next day. We are about to install the Odyssey battery. But before I do that, I'm not really prepped for the next intro. It's a new day. I just want to come here and show you this. My God, it's beautiful. It's Saturday. It's October the 7th. Uh, Year of Lord 2023. The temperature has just crashed massively. I got oil in my arm somehow. The temperature just crashed. When I'm out here in, you know, I got a hoodie on. I still got shorts on. It ain't cold. It's in the 60s, but it's, you know, comfortable. I had to put a little hoodie on. A little thin one. Either way, it's uh, Saturday. It's Red River. What do we call that now? Is it rivalry? Is it shoot? It ain't shootout no more, so it's rivalry. Is on right now. Watching that. Uh, we have Bama's going to Texas A&M a little bit later on, and Kentucky's coming to Georgia later on. Braves start the playoffs. There's a lot of stuff I want to be involved in, but I want to get here and just show you how beautiful it is. Trees over the house over there changing color. Where? Buzzard. He has a buzzard over there flying around too. But anyways, getting back to work and uh, I put this battery in a Jeep. Alright, new aux battery is going in. Alright, it's not in all the way. Something ain't right. Ah, there we go. Now, with that right there. Like that. Alright, the Odyssey battery is installed it charged all night long thing i want to point out if you remember in the old video when i did the ox beam switch controller why i put it up here instead of here was i knew the history of battery failures with these jeeps and i did not want to repeat of that so i put mine up there out of the way it is kind of a hassle getting the fuse box off it does suck you can get it off but you see it's scratched up here but uh you got to kind of pick the cover up and go that way with the cover and then this way and then pull it out but Good lord, this game is going crazy over there. I gotta get back to watching it. So, batteries are all hooked up. We're good to go there. Let's go start it up. So, the stop start still functions without the stop start battery. And with the fuse pulled, oh, that's just wild. I can't even begin to explain that one to you. It is active with one battery. All my electronics are going. It's we are home. So we're home. We're at the mailbox. That's what I came down here for. Alright, my daughter just came back from the store. So now that I'm down the driveway, let's turn around and go back to the house. All the driver's seat photos unbuckled. I wonder if I can trick the same that coming on some more. Going back down the driveway. Yeah, let's turn you more that way. There you go. plan for the night is to get out here in the field and do some uh, time lapses of the stars since it's really clear right now. see how that goes because my neighbor's been building on his house over here so may not be able to do it. so obviously i did film the video but while i was in the field the jeep gave me a low voltage warning and i had to rush back home so we eventually went to version 3.0 then 4.0 of the ox delete Auto stop start is active yes without the ox battery that is the wildest thing i've ever seen I really need to get a wiring diagram up and begin to 
study this system and learn how it works better. So clearly, I don't understand something. Real quick here, in the editing of this video, I didn't explain something very good. This Jeep I have has a smart alternator. If you have a JL, you probably also have a smart alternator. And since I didn't realize this, that is what this two, God, it was more like five days of troubleshooting was about. I didn't realize it. And so, just so you know that you have a smart alternator, it monitors your battery, it varies its voltage, and when you replace the battery, it's got to relearn. That's how this process works. So I'm about to explain to you the relearn process, but I didn't explain. This is on a modern vehicle, smart alternators, all these intelligent sensors everywhere. You've got to go through this process to make it operate correctly. So that's what we got. Now watch the relearn process. What I learned is that this was all normal that I was fighting, but I was not letting the vehicle do what it needed to do. I had disconnected the battery and was recharging the old battery at night with a trickle charger until I was able to replace the main battery. And I had the aux battery removed and I had the F42 uh, fuse pulled so it would completely screwed up the learning process by me doing all that. What I end up doing was I replaced the battery and then I tried to properly bypass the aux battery because I deleted it. I did not put the aux battery back in the Jeep. It was trying to relearn the new battery, but it was going nuts because it had been operating on two or three different batteries at this point, different states of charge, because I was trying to trickle charge an old one to keep it alive for a week until I could get a new one. So while it was trying to learn, I wasn't allowing it to learn, and here's why. In order for this battery to learn, you have to drive the uh, your vehicle, in this case a Jeep, for about an hour let it monitor the state of charge of the battery. Let it start using the battery discharge. Uses the battery intelligence sensor. It learns how all this stuff works. It calculates all the stuff. And as it learns the battery, it tweaks how it adjusts the voltage output of the alternator. So when you drive it for more than an hour, and then you shut the Jeep off for more than four hours, it allows the computer to do calculations while the Jeep is idle. Then the next time you drive it, it has a baseline it runs through again and it again it starts doing the same thing but it starts tweaking and it's fine-tuning its learning process when you do this for several times run the Jeep stop the Jeep run the Jeep stop the Jeep run it for more than an hour let it sit for more than four hours park it in the parking lot at work for eight hour shift there's more than four hours drive it home I mean for me it's an hour and 20 minute drive you drive home you let it sit at home all night overnight for eight hours it's learning the whole time Whenever it's doing that, the battery intelligence sensor is drawing current. It's reading the state of charge of the battery. It's reading the output voltage from the alternator, sending all this to the body control computer, and it's calculating all this stuff. And it's determining how to use this smart alternator to maintain your voltage where it wants to be, but keep itself at maximum efficiency. That's what it was doing. Well, what I ran into, if you saw all my short videos I was making, if you're on the 1870 Off-Road YouTube or Instagram page, you are seeing me panicking because I'm like, this thing is acting nuts. Well, what happened was I changed my battery. I don't drive the Jeep to work. I just drive it around the house a couple times, maybe once or twice a week to keep it running because otherwise I don't drive the Jeep unless I'm going off-road somewhere. I drive my truck daily. Well, because I wasn't daily driving my Jeep, it wasn't able to learn the new battery and it was never functioning correctly. And that's why I was almost afraid it was about to leave me stranded. Now that I've driven it back and forth to work a few times, it has started learning how this Jeep operates. And now it knows uh, it's calculated how to maintain this battery. Now it may still fine tune it more as, as I drive it to work because it's always calculating every time you drive it. But because I was only driving a couple minutes in a town, then driving back home, to go run town, get groceries or whatever. I had to, you know, go farmer's market, buy some meat, or I had to go to a softball game. All this stuff was near my house. I was never going far from home. The Jeep was never getting to go, to go through the full cycle of learning how the battery voltage is. That's what my problem was. So by me driving and back forth to work, I'm on my second day now. And I'm about three quarters of the way home, maybe two thirds of the way home from work. Yeah, about two thirds of the way home. So I still got probably another 20 miles or so to go. As I'm almost home now, I am, the Jeep is learning the new battery and now it's calculating better. This is what I should have been doing the whole time. 
So the problem was self-induced. So your life lesson going forward. If you do not drive your vehicle for long periods of time and you change the battery, you're going to have problems. I don't know if it's going to die on you. Mine never died, but I was prepared for it because here in a minute I will show you. That down there in the floor is my original battery, fully charged. That right there under my lunchbox, that's my jumper cables <laughs> sitting there ready to go. Also on the other side of my battery is 10 millimeter socket and a wrench and an extension. So uh, I was prepared to either swap batteries or use my jumper cables to recharge the one in a Jeep just in case. <coughs> that was when I finally decided I need to drive this thing to work and see what it does on a long trip. Obviously, I've since been able to go and print out some information to learn how this works. Now I understand how it works. Realized it was doing what it was supposed to do. I was I was throwing a stick in the spokes, and the Jeep was not able to learn the new battery because I wasn't driving it long enough. I should have got out and drove it farther, let the battery run through a full cycle, and it would have understood what to do. So anyways, this is normal operation. Here we go, this will be the outtake reel. Just look, just simple, something about life, right? My dad lives with me. Uh, pretty cool, I grew up living with my dad. And uh, all these years, not being around him a lot, you know, because of kids and moving on with life and all that, but he moved in with me a couple of years ago. I don't remember how many, maybe three. So it's cool having him living here. Downsides of that, number one, I don't have a golf cart anymore because he has it now. I don't have a basement no more, he has it now. <laughs> so have a uh this whole side over here was a game room i used to have a ping pong table down there and i was gonna put me a pool table down there and build me like this whole big little game room area he took all of it i don't have anything down there no more so but anyways uh it's still cool having your dad living with you if it's an awesome deal if you ever get your parents to come back it's fine you know he's just come up here Jeeps be jeepin'.